Later in World War II, the British made constant commando raids on German-occupied Europe. These raids served as nuisance to German garrisons and also had a role in generating intelligence. However, one of World War II's big questions is why the Germans didn't do the same to Britain. Why didn't the German land teams of commandos to attack British defences or gather intelligence? It is difficult to know why they didn't. The only official attacks by Germany on mainland Britain during World War II were aerial bombing raids by the Luftwaffe, including of course the later V1 and V2 remote bombing campaigns, and long-range artillery bombardments of the Dover area by large artillery pieces based in northern France. Officially, no German soldiers ever landed on British soil as part of a raid or a reconnaissance. However, for decades a question mark has hung over this claim. A question mark centred on the Isle of Wight, a large island just off the English south coast and a top secret facility on that island. The one great advantage Britain possessed during the Battle of Britain and the Blitz in 1940-41 was something called Chain Home Radar. Before the war, a chain of radar stations had been established along the south and east coasts of Britain, all the way up to Scotland, that provided the Royal Air Force with some advance warning of German air attacks. The Germans had tried to knock out some of these stations during the Battle of Britain, including launching Stuka dive bomber attacks against them. The most heavily attacked was the radar station at Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. But despite damage, the Luftwaffe failed to poke out Britain's eyes, and as the war progressed, the radars were upgraded and continued to provide early warning of German aerial attacks. The question is, was the radar site at Ventnor on the Isle of Wight the site of a German commando attack? Allegedly, one was made against it, not just to knock it out, but to steal some of its secrets. The evidence for such an incident at Ventnor is slim but intriguing. A researcher discovered the unit diary of an air raid precautions unit, that is the British Air Raid Wardens, that provided coverage for the Ventnor area. An odd event was carefully inscribed in the diary on the 16th of August 1943. It reads, quote, Special report. Police report two dinghies full of Germans in the sea, seen at 0218 hours, reported to police through Navy, end quote. Ten minutes after this report, the ARP log recorded a fire near the Ventnor radar station pylons. According to a local Ventnor resident, who had been a teenage ARP dispatch rider at the time, the German raid was openly discussed among ARP staff until the arrival of unidentified civilians from some shadowy government ministries who forced them to sign the Official Secrets Act. German aerial activity certainly occurred over the area of the Isle of Wight on the night of the 15th to 16th of August 1943. Two German bombers were shot down near Portsmouth during an air raid on the British naval base there, and on the 16th of August, some hours after the alleged incident at Ventnor, a Messerschmitt Bf 109 on a photo reconnaissance mission was shot down at Newchurch on the Isle of Wight. Could it have been photographing the results of a commando raid? A third piece of evidence comes from another ARP report from the 16th of August 1943. It mentioned the sighting of German forces in the sea of Ventnor at 0218 hours, but makes no mention of a fire or anything else suspicious. The strange events at Ventnor had been reported elsewhere in Britain during the war, and always associated with British radar sites. Bordsea Manor, on the coast of Suffolk in eastern England, was one place where some kind of German raid was apparently thwarted by the Royal Navy. As with the Ventnor incident, Germans in dinghies had allegedly disembarked from a surfaced U-boat at night, but withdrawn when a naval vessel intervened. A similar rubber dinghy-type raid was said to have been thwarted at Pevensey in East Sussex, another South Coast radar site, when in this case, a local legend contends that the Germans actually landed but were driven off by defending British troops, and withdrew after, quote, flashing lights and gunfire, end quote, were observed at sea. So did the Germans have the troops to perform commando-style raids? Yes, they did. The Brandenburgers, a special army unit of sabotage, parachute-trained and raiding troops, many highly decorated. 
The particular raiding unit that would have been used against England, Kustenjäger Abteilung Brandenburg, was however never operational against the UK according to its own records. The Brandenburgers were highly decorated and yet no records exist concerning any awards given to Brandenburgers for actions on British soil or in the sea close by. And all other raids all over Europe made by the Brandenburgers were carefully recorded and the records do survive. So what might have occurred at the Isle of Wight and elsewhere? Was it a case of rattle troops firing at shadows in the dark? Or were real Germans indeed spotted in dinghies, the crews perhaps of ditched German planes? The numbers of Germans and the number of dinghies later inflated in the retelling in local pubs. Were some attacks actually British commandos practising in preparation for the D-Day landings? and the ARP kept out of the loop of such hush-hush operations. They were a civilian organisation. What business did they have knowing about commando training operations? The paucity of documentary evidence from both British and German sources suggests that no German commando-style raids were made on the British Isles in World War II, and evidence to the contrary, comprising almost entirely of witness statements often made decades after the events, are cases of mistaken identity or outright fabrications. For now, until solid documentary evidence is found, I will reserve judgment on this intriguing story. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.